how you have to think in a traditional way on the ground, right? And then I will demo that steps. So uh, traditional thinking is uh, uh, the, a more rational thinking that, uh, uh, let's say, people have, especially the people who work on engineering, science, uh, the research of areas. So here's the definition of the traditional thinking is, uh, so it is a thought process involving formulating problems and their solutions, so the solutions are presented in a form that can be effectively carried out. So I'll explain this definition again in this picture. So traditional thinking is, is the way we solve problems. Is the way we solve problems. So for example, uh, so we have four main steps. So you have to abstract your, your problem. Let's say for example, uh, can anybody give us any, any, any research problem? So what, what, so you have some problems, like, right, 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 right? So, do you have some problems? Yeah, for example, patterns and checking okay. for researchers. Okay. You have this problem. Good, good, good. So, uh, uh, she talked about the plagiarism, plagiarism detection. Yeah. It is a research problem and people are working on it. Okay. In this case, uh, we have to, uh, to think to solve it in a compositional way, to, to move forward to the graphs. So uh, first, you have a striking problem. Oops. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we do have a strike our problem. So abstraction means to remove unnecessarily comp components. For example, so the pleasures in detection. What we have, the main elements are what? Papers and authors, right? So for example, we don't need, we do not need that, let's say, like, uh, we do not need to know who is the head of the department or which university, maybe, this way, basic way. So we just we just keep the authors, the names, and the uh, and their papers, the content, and then we move forward is uh, to break down your your, your, your problem. So we have in the so in the paper you have uh, different kind of sections, right? So you have the title, you have the, the abstract, and then you have the, the, the content. So you decompose your, your problem into uh, manageable uh, components. This is the way we, we work with the computer science, right? Like in computer science, we have the OOP subject, right? What we do there is we, we have to define our objects in the environment. We have people, cars, whatever. So the composition. And it comes to the pattern of permission. Here we have to analyze and look for repeated sequences. So like, okay, so it, uh, it, it, is, it is a good example here is that, okay, so if I can find the same uh, paragraph repeating, it means there is something wrong with it, right? So we just have to find a, a repetition in your research area uh, problem. And then you come to an algorithmic way of, of, of organizing, of coming up with an algorithm that can help you find those patterns. Okay. So just like, uh, like a quick example. Okay. So, uh, but what's here is you can't have this thinking in a traditional way. So traditional thinking is what we expect from graduates of computer science departments. I mean, we hope and we force them, we will learn to teach them how to think in this way. And it comes, uh, actually, it's not enough to have a traditional thinking. We have one more step forward. That is the graph way of seeing stuff. So uh, you have to see this like a graph way. So uh, I had a professor in, the, in my university in the US. I, taught, I, I took some course in graph, applied graphs and stuff. So he was telling us, you have to see everything in a graph. You know? People like graph. The door, the car is on the street, you know. So uh, if you have this this talent, you can build it. It's just easy. You just can learn it. It's, it's not that hard. So uh, yeah, kind of you know, it's funny glasses here. So uh, a graph of thinking is like this. You see the people every day on the street, right? But a graph of seeing stuff is like this. You so you should have an imagination of seeing people as nodes and the relations that they edges. So see for example here. Okay, so. Let's come to the steps. So the first step is to understand the research problem. So if you don't understand your, your, your research problem, you can solve it, right? So the basic step we have in the research. And then you should, you should know the graph problems. So uh, in graph theory, you have to go back to the graph theory and learn more stuff there, and then come back to use it. And then do some mapping. Let me get an example here. Let's go with this. So uh, let's say we have the research problem of what? Of uh, the frequency allocation. So, people you know, the data communication, they have this problem, right? 
So uh, that is, uh, we have, so that's the quote I tell you. They have uh, towers, right, in different places. So the point there is, the frequencies of the towers should not overlap, so they should have different frequencies. So if, if there's a tower here, and Mars is one, let's say, close to, like, different place, close to here. So the, the both towers, they should have different frequencies. That's to not have that conflict of signals. So this is a research problem, a real world problem. Let's see how graph can help us, help us with this. So, so I'm, I'm giving with this test, and you, you can imagine what, what research problem you have and try to apply it for now. So, uh, and then, so you have to understand the research problem, and we just define one. And then here we have to know more about the graph theory. The graph problem is there. So here we have a simple list of them. So, uh, so the step one you've done, step two to find the right algorithm, algorithmic graph problem. So uh, there is a field, it's called algorithmic graph. So we have graph theory from discrete mathematics, and we have uh, algorithmic graph theory. It is a joint between the discrete, this, discrete mathematics and free computer science. So both joints, they come up with this field of study, algorithmic graph theory. So in this field, we have some research problems that people use it to solve problems. One of them is this. So imagine you have a graph, or whatever it is, it is. It is. to be people, whatever. And then here's a problem, how to cluster them, how to group them into uh, uh, coherent groups, okay? So do you think that this, this, this uh, problem can help us in s s solving the frequency allocation problem? Do you think, what do you think? Yes, we yes. yes, okay, let's say the nodes are towers, okay? And the edges are, can be what? So edges are, if the towers, their neighbors, they have an edge between them. So do you think this can help? We can have a more, 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 of, more of these graph problems. So for this one, do you think it can help us? And yes, and no. Okay, let's go to the next one. What about the node, node coloring? So every node is a tower, and the edges are if the, if the towers are neighbors. So tower here in the let's say, on campus is not a neighbor for a tower in Pilmania, you know, which is totally far away. Let's say one here, one close to Pilmania. Yeah, close, like geographically close. So let's say the towers are this. So the research problem here, I said here to cluster them. In algorithmic graph theory, there's a problem called node coloring. The problem is this. You have a set of nodes and edges. You have to color the nodes uh, with a condition of that there is, should not be two neighbor nodes having the same color. Okay. So, uh, what do you think about this one? Is given to help yeah, us? Yeah, come to that. Okay. Yeah. Why? Because you can uh, consider the nodes as the frequency mm -hmm. of the tower. And so, by applying this rule that not adjacent nodes should not have the same color, then you can uh, use it to distribute the frequency in the same Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, every color is a, is a different frequency. So, it means there is no two towers having the same colors, neighbors. It means they should have different colors, that is, having different frequencies. Right, correct. So, yeah, one more here, I guess, yes. So, I have another problem here, edge coloring. The problem here is, you should color your edges uh, with a condition of not having the, the same edge, like, let's say here. So uh, we have these two nodes. Oh, okay. This one. Oh. So uh, there should not be two edges with the same color getting out of the same node. So this node should has one edge with a pink color. That's the condition. So what do you think about this? If, we say the nodes are uh, powers and edges are the neighborhood. Is it going to work? It's not that much interesting, right? Okay, let's go forward. Another, another problem here is the graph is an isomorph prism. That's the topological organization of the nodes. So this graph is the, the same as this one, exactly the same. If you take this one apart, right, we're going to say, okay, four. Take the four here, you're going to have this one. But then the problem here is you have the edges crossing over each other. Okay? So the condition here is having the same graph reorganize it with the condition of not having edges overlapped. 
show this with another uh, graph problem. And uh, the other thing is you can work for the our problem. Okay, should I forward? Okay. So every research, I mean uh, every algorithmic graph problem I just explained, they have algorithms, people build it. So you can just use it. Okay? Don't worry, you don't have to come up with a with an efficient algorithm. There are people publishing and working on this uh, research. You know? For example, if you need this, if you see in your research area, this is going to help you. Edge coloring, there is some algorithms, even though you code, you can just use it. You just have to find the right, right uh, solution for yourself. Okay, so we defined the problem, we found the right algorithmic graph problem that can help us with. So you just have to do some mapping. Okay, like saying, okay, nodes are edges. Uh, I mean, nodes are towers, edges are the neighborhood, the colors are the frequencies. So uh, I'll go in more depth uh, steps to explain more for the, this, the same example. Okay, so now we understand our problem of frequency assignment, and then we have to do some our graph. So nodes are the towers, as I said, and the edges are the neighborhood. And then to determine more topological aspects of your graph. So as Dr. Colin explained, they have different characteristics of the graph. So they might be weighted, unweighted, directed, undirected. All these features have have uh, important meanings when you apply graph. Okay, so it might be good if you have weights in your graph. Okay, let's say the transportation as explained, or you might that you might do not need it. Um, so and then comes. So we found our our uh, graph problem. That was the node coloring, and then do mapping. That's the go forward. So I'll just go uh, in practice. So this is our recent problem. I just explained right that the radio frequency assignment for the colors they should be different. Blah blah. That's from the data communication. And then comes here. You have to just start your graph. So in our application, for example, let's say that these are towers, okay? And these are the regions that tower covers. If we have a tower, let's say, let's example, let's say for example. On campus, it will not cover the whole urban, right? Not the whole city, just uh, with a specific diameter, right? So that covers area, it is a circle. So uh, if we have circles overlapping, for example, let's say here, here we are on campus, on campus, here, and we have another tower, let's say close to here, okay? Uh, so they do have overlapping of the, of the coverage area. So in this example, the two color areas or the two towers they should have the same frequency. Okay? They just need a better communication at the time. If they have if they have the same frequency, uh, when you come to this area, you'll lose your signal. Okay? It will just not work for you. So uh, this this can find our graph. So towers, towers are nodes, and edges are exist. What is this if the, if the circle is overlap? So there's no edge between this and this, right? Because they do not overlap. They do here, they have an edge because they overlap. You see? It's clear, I guess. So uh, we just inside our graph. So here your graph, let's say, I just took a part of it. It's just here. So you just do the, the node coloring. The node coloring is, as I said, you have to have every node with a different color if they neighbors. So in this case, we solve our problem of frequency assignment uh, after, let's say, using that node coloring uh, algorithm. So now we have we have uh, nodes with di different colors. But you see here we have nodes with the same color, right? Blue and blue. But they do not overlap, it's okay. The condition is if they do overlap, they should have different colors. Okay, so uh, some uh, interesting uh, Resources for you to explore more. Okay, so these are these were my textbooks in my course I took. So uh, these are course uh, like reference books, textbooks, and we have a plan to to offer that this kind of courses in the University of Zaza. If you have graduate students, you might come to get there. Uh, it will be a pleasure. And any questions?